everybody. Welcome to Church Online. It's great to be with you this morning. We've got our Christmas decks up, as you can see. Yeah, and because today is the first Sunday in Advent, which I find confusing, because today is the 29th of November. Oh, okay. And Advent in the church world needs four Sundays. Okay. So we're beginning Advent before you can open your Advent calendar. That's not very fair, is it? It's not, is it? No. It's not very fair. No. It's one way of building the suspense up to the first day of opening your Advent calendar. Yeah. So what we, what our um, our first question for you this morning is, when you open your Advent calendar on the 1st of December, what type of Advent calendar is it going to be? So obviously it's 2020, so people can get fancy ones. They, I'm sure you could get a different perfume behind each Advent calendar. You get different things Sounds to drink. Expensive. It does sound expensive, doesn't it? I am. Um, I'm a purist. I like to go for a chocolate advent calendar. So what I really want to know is what type of chocolate advent calendar are you going to be opening on the first of December? Yeah. Alice, what's it going to be for you? Well, I don't really know. I was um, just remembering that every year we've always hassled my mom to always get us our advent calendars. So mm. even though we're all in our twenties and none of us live with her. It doesn't, yeah, we always kind of thought... You're never like, too old for mum to get an advent calendar. No, you're not, I think we, you? we've done the same. One year, our mum didn't get his advent calendars, and we really kicked off. Oh, did you? Absolutely. Yeah, great. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel like you've just put a lot of pressure on your parent and see if they see what comes out, really. Yeah. Yeah, can't wait. Yeah, nice. Make sure you comment below. We would love to know what kind of advent calendar it is that you're going to be opening. Because today's the first Sunday in Advent, that means that we're going to be lighting the first candle on yeah, our you advent. You might notice this addition to our kitchen yeah, yeah. it's not it's not gone down that well i would say in a, across the whole of our yeah. household but um, and yet we'll be keeping it here throughout all of advent because we're going to keep that candle burning very we? committed yeah so we're going to be having a different um church member or church family light that advent candle for us each week so today we are remembering uh, the patriarchs and we are going to the aldridges and they're going to explain a bit of what that's like they're going to light the candle and they're going to pray for us as we begin our service this morning the first candle on the advent wreath represents the patriarchs. The patriarchs are the first people in the Bible to follow God obediently and to teach his people how to trust him. They became known as the founding fathers of God's family. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and all the patriarchs. We thank you that you were their father and ours too. Thank you that you never change, no matter what's happening in our world. In Jesus' name. Amen.
is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me. Yeah. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still. Over Advent we're going to be doing all of our notices on Zoom after the service so you can jump on Zoom straight away to find out what's going on. And during Advent uh, we are encouraging everyone in our church community to get involved as we try and spread comfort and joy throughout the city. We want us to do uh, 400 acts of comfort and joy mm -hmm. um, throughout Advent, four weeks in Advent, we've got four candles, nice. we're giving each of our four weeks a different theme. So during this, the first week of Advent, we want you to think about how you're going to spread comfort and joy amongst frontline workers. So that's anyone who's working in the NHS, social care setting, who's a teacher, who's done anything to keep the wheels of our country turning uh, during the last uh, nine, ten months or so, whatever it's been. Um, so make sure that you're thinking about some different ways that you can do it. This is the week to do frontline workers. Yeah. When you've committed to your act of comfort and joy, then we need you to go onto the church website and log it. Obviously, it's valuable to the person, whatever you do, whether you log it or not, but we would love to be able um, to keep a bit of a tally going and see if we can reach 400 acts. That's 100 acts a week, so uh, we're going to need lots of people to get involved. You might want to do a couple of things um, each week as well. So Yeah, and you can do whatever it is that you want to do, whether that's like bake something or just send a text or whatever it is. You can think of an act that will give comfort and joy. Absolutely. It can be big, small medium size, whatever it is that you want to do. Uh, what, what do you think we'll do this week to spread comfort and joy amongst frontline workers? I've got an idea. Yeah, come on, what is yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that we're, we're baking a lot of bread at the minute. Yeah, and we can't afford to eat all the bread that we're baking. No, we really shouldn't, otherwise we will become big balls of dough. Um, and so this week, I'm either going to bake a loaf or I made some bagels last weekend. I'm wondering about whether I bake some bagels for as a local dentist. Um, across the road, Dr Chong's, I think. Um, so we might uh, might do something kind for them. But whatever it is that you want to do that's going to help spread comfort and joy during this week one of Advent, uh, we would love for you to get involved. Hazel is going to read for us before Tim finishes our sermon series looking at uh, the Exodus. The reading today is taken from Exodus chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. I will take you as my own people and I will be your God. Then will you know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. And I will bring you to the land of I saw with uplifted hand to give to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. The second reading is Joshua chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went through the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your position and follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the ark, 
do not go near it. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua said to the priests, take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. And the Lord said to Joshua, today I will begin to exalt you in the eye of all Israel. So they will know that I am with you as I was with Moses. The third reading is from Joshua chapter 3 verses 14 to 17. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the Ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water stopped flowing from upstream. It piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarathan while the water flowing down to the Sea of the Araba, that is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. Good morning everyone. In the first verses of the reading today we hear of God's promises to his people. Just listen to the words that he says. I will take you as my own people and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians' captivity. And I will bring you to the land I swore with uplifted hands to give to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. God's promises to the Hebrews were fulfilled completely. He freed them from slavery he became their God and accepted them as his people. Then he led them to the land that he had promised. I guess this offers a portrayal of our own journey of faith, doesn't it? Jesus, through the cross, saves us and sets us free from the slavery of our sin. He accepts us and then we begin a journey into a new life with him. In the second part of our reading, taken from the book of Joshua, we read of Joshua preparing to lead the Hebrew people across the River Jordan and into the Promised Land. Joshua was the new chosen leader of God's people following the death of Moses. I'd like to spend a bit of time talking about Joshua as a leader. Well, he'd spent years as Moses' right-hand man. You could say that he'd shadowed him. Joshua had been with Moses in some of the most holy places, but he'd also experienced some of the more challenging times when the people had grumbled and rebelled and were downcast. But Moses was a great role model to learn from. And when Moses died, Joshua was the natural person to become the leader of the people. But he was also God's chosen leader, God's chosen one. Joshua's time of leading God's people was very fruitful and his leadership was very successful. So why was Joshua such a successful leader? Well, because he was a devout man of God. And in the first chapter of Joshua, Listen to the words that God speaks to him. Be strong and courageous, says God. Be careful to obey all the laws my servant Moses gave you. 
Keep the book of law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. I am the Lord your God and I will be with you wherever you go. So Joshua, well, he listened to God and he obeyed God. Joshua prayed to God and meditated on his words. God kept his promises and was faithful to his people. Being in a position of leadership is always a challenging role. And I would suggest that if you are in such a position, it is because God had placed you there. And as a Christian person, you are under God's authority. Being in leadership can sometimes be a lonely place. It requires you to make difficult decisions and it requires you to lead people towards a vision even when they may not want to be led or they may want to see that vision. Leading people can be a real challenge. But as Christian leaders, we do well to remember and to mirror what Joshua did. So he worshipped God. He prayed and spent time with God. He listened to God. He meditated on God's word and he obeyed God. When we spend time building our relationship with him, he promises to walk with us, even through the tough times. The times when we really struggle are the times when we try and do things our own way and we leave God out. Of course, this model of discipleship um, that Joshua followed doesn't relate exclusively to leaders. It's relevant to all Christian believers. Well, uh, today is the first Sunday in Advent. And that's rather weird, isn't it? Um, because the first Sunday in Advent is actually in November. Anyway, um, Advent is a time of preparation. A time when we prepare to welcome the coming to earth of the baby Jesus. God's son, the light of the world. And this is a wonderful time for Christian people all over the world. A time of worship and celebration. But Christmas has also become very commercialised, hasn't it? Where many companies are looking to make huge profits through the buying of Christmas presents and all of the many items related to Christmas. I guess we all get caught up in that sometimes. And some of us... We create to-do lists, don't we? I wonder if you have got a Christmas to-do list. It may read something like this. Christmas clean. Clean the house from top to bottom and throw away any stuff we don't need to make room for more stuff. Decorations out the loft. Decorations up. Maybe buy some new ones as well. Buy Christmas cards. Write Christmas cards, deliver Christmas cards, make Christmas, Christmas present list, buy Christmas presents, wrap and label Christmas presents, deliver Christmas presents, make food shopping list, do a food shop for Christmas dinner, and so on and so on and so on. And I'm sure that all of us could add to that list as well. Our worlds can seem so busy and hectic at this time of year, can't they? So, Christian friends, as we enter the season of Advent, let us keep our eyes focused on Jesus. In our huddle groups, we have focused on meditation as one of our disciplines. In the midst of our busyness, I wonder if each day throughout Advent, we could actually stop. and spend five minutes each day in silent meditation, coming into the presence of God, just as Joshua did. I wonder if in a season that is often renowned for overconsumption, we may choose a day or more 
of abstinence or fasting maybe from food from social media or watching tv and we use that time to focus on what jesus may be saying to us personally so a time to seek his wisdom and his guidance on our lives and let us also remember our challenge of 400 acts of kindness as we seek to bring some comfort and joy to members of our community and beyond. Let us look out for opportunities to share the love of Jesus through acts of kindness to others. In this season of Advent, may we experience the joy of Christmas as we seek to celebrate the coming of the baby Jesus. And may we remain focused on him in prayer and devotion and may we see his kingdom come through hearts and minds transformed in ourselves our families our friends and in our communities i pray that you will have a wonderful and joyous journey through advent god bless you amen and right now I'm going to open my first window. I wonder what stood out to you as Tim's been talking to us this morning. Whatever it is, why don't you put it in the comments on Facebook or on YouTube and then we can learn together what it is that stuck out for you. Uh, and when you've done that, done that for a few minutes, Phoebe is going to lead us in prayer this morning. Hello everybody, I'm Phoebe and I'm going to say a prayer for um, the first Sunday of Advent, uh, which is our preparation as Christmas begins. So like John the Baptist told his followers to get ready for Jesus, to prepare the way, to prepare our hearts, removing boulders and filling potholes so that it's an easy way for Jesus to get into us. So God, we make ourselves ready for you on this first Sunday of Advent. Like a woman preparing to give birth to her baby, we nourish ourselves and we prepare a place for you to be welcomed inside us. We hope for you to be, um, for your, we hope for your life to be reborn in us each day. And as we enter into Advent and look forward to your presence with us, Please help us to leave behind our disappointments with ourselves, where we have not been as we had hoped. Our disappointments with others, 
and our shared grief of the last year. We thank you for the signs of hope that have nurtured us and kept us going. We look to you for our healing, to heal our friends, our families, our nation and our world. Let us bring to God those situations now. And I've lit this candle as a sign of hope that God's light will guide each of us as we prepare ourselves for him. And even though it's a small candle, a little chink of light, God, we pray that you will blaze your warmth, your hope into us, refresh us and restore us. We love you and we welcome you to be with us this Advent time. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks, Phoebe. Let's finish our service with a blessing. People of God, be glad, for your God delights in you, giving you joy for sadness and turning the dark to light. Be strong in hope, therefore, for your God comes to save. You are God's children. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each of us and those we love and pray for today. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Where are we going next? Zoom. We're going to zoom on. We are. Over to Zoom. <laughs> Doesn't get better. <laughs> it's been great to be with you on Facebook and YouTube. It's going to be even better to see you in yes. person on yeah. Zoom. So make sure that you come and join us there. If you want to know the notices, yeah. where you got to be? Zoom. Zoom. Yeah. If you want to have a great time with other people, where have you got to be? Zoom. If you want to show us your deckies, that's on. Show us your deckies. We've shown you ours. Yeah. <laughs> now we want to see yours. Yeah. Hopefully yours are better than ours. Loads of great features over yeah. on Zoom. Just now. And mind you, I bet I bet no one has an advent candle. No, not a setup like ours in front of the washing machine. Absolutely not. Just as the bishop would like. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. See you nice on one. Zoom. See you on Zoom. <laughs>